Merbius strips. This is what I'd call a no twist loop. Uh, it's just a cylinder of paper with no twists in it. Uh, I mean, you can twist it, but the topology of it is it's joined flat. And the really obvious first thing to do is if you start cutting it, and I feel like this demo is always necessary, Brady, but really not exciting. If you cut a loop of paper in half, particularly if you stay in a straight line, you go all the way around. When you do the last snip, you get two bits of paper. Nobody is surprised that cutting something in half gives you two halves. The cliche punchline, I'm gonna cut straight to it. Ha, huh, that was almost funny. Here is a loop of paper. The only thing I've done is twisted it before gluing it together. There's one twist in it. And you can kind of see that shape there. Again, I'm not gonna just chop it down the middle. I'm gonna make a hole and then chop along the surface exactly as I did before. And I'm trying to cut straight to the punchline because when you do this, when you do the final snip, if it's the first time you've ever seen it, the final snip, I think it's genuinely amazing because when I do the cut, nothing falls onto the table. What's I've that you've got? Cut it in half and I've still only got one bit. So the first thing that's amazing to me is you cut something in half, but you still only got one bit and it's now another loop and it's actually got more twists. And I'm not even gonna go into the details of how many more twists. We've done videos on this channel. Tadashi Takieda has done loads of- You can at least tell me the number. Well, I think it's now a double twist Mobius. Band. And I've kind of taken the one twist and duplicated it. And the famous fact about a Merbius band is that it has one side and in cutting it, I basically have gone up to two sides. The reason I'm talking about it is that I found, I was curious about Merbius strips and I was trying to make, as I do, a little Joji profile. You won't be surprised that I wanted to make a visualization of Merbius strips so that I could get my head around it and so I could show other people because once you've cut it, it's really hard to put it back together. And I wanted a simulation that I could do the reverse process. So I did that and it, it made me realize something I hadn't realized before. So I think I'm gonna show you my simulation and we'll make a prediction from that and come and try something slightly different on another, if that's okay. All right. Are you seeing a nice cylinder on the screen there? It's uh, obviously much neater than my scrappy bit of paper. However, I can cut this loop. This is the really boring demo I did earlier. Uh, we cut it in the middle and you get two loops. What I was really pleased about is I can rejoin them and that was the value of having the simulation that I can sort of try again. And I've also found a way of twisting it so I can just, click a twist and you can see it's put that in. So this is now the Merbius loop, which is, it's lovely to see a clean representation of it and actually quite enjoyed trying to figure out the way of plotting it in the piece of software, but that's, that's maybe another video. That's nice, man, that's nice. Well, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Actually, well, to, to go on a little bit of a tangent, what is really nice to remember that you can just look stuff up. I was no Merbius strip expert and I looked up, how can I plot a Merbius strip in parametric form, that's kind of what I needed for Jojo. And you know, the Wikipedia page has everything I needed. And I'm, I'm enough of a mathematician to know that I can probably spend some time to understand it and it worked and I was like, thank God. The other thing I realized is that once I had the formula, in the formula there's, there's an angle in there, uh, which is partly to do with how to make it loop, but also to do with how to make it twist. And once I realized which angle was the twist, I could change that and I could do another twist. So I've got a situation where I can twist this loop as many times as I want. And that was really pleasing. So the, the massive power of, sort of simulation is that you can generalize. And in particular, you can generalize quickly. Whereas with paper, this is a pain, right? Uh, so I'm gonna twist it once and we'll recreate our first experiment. If I cut this in half, you get the one loop. Now, I still kind of find this amazing, but I really like being able to see it and then rejoin it because I can't do that on paper. That's the loop, that's the cut around the middle that I did with the scissors, and it is just one loop. And you can see kind of why it's one loop. But the thing that I hadn't seen before, I, I'm not claiming to be the first to see this, but I colored it, right? So if I color the original loop in two bits, a red and a blue bit, it's really not a surprise when you cut it and you get a blue loop and a red loop. Again, I'm being patronizing for the starting point, but when you then rejoin it and twist it, it's really obvious to me that the blue and the red now meet up. So there's not two separate loops. So when I do cut it, I've got one long loop that consists of the blue loop and the red loop joined together. And so that coloring really helped me. What helped me even more is that once I'd separated it on the simulation, I can still do the twist. And so this is the bit that made the penny drop for me. If I just twist it back, there's the two loops. And if I twist it up again, that's what I'm doing to make this chopped Merbius strip. It's just, I'm taking the two and I'm, I'm joining them together with a twist. It just felt like something clicked for me. And I'm not claiming to have done profound mathematics here, but what I'm really claiming is that the ability to tinker with a simulation helps me as a mathematician. And it helps me as a teacher as well, because if I get a penny drop moment, I wonder, can I 
arrange that penny drop moment for someone else I'm trying to explain. But it also means we can play a bit more. So the colouring is one thing. Uh, when, when you twist it without the colouring, it becomes less obvious and a bit more mysterious. So the colouring really helps you sort of separate it. But it also tells you something else. If I twist it again, because I've now got the generalisation, I want you to predict. I mean, you can see what's going to happen. If I twist again, the red and the blue on one side are going to switch positions. What I think you'll find is that the red joins with the red and the blue joins with the blue, which means I think we must have two separate loops. And lo and behold, that is apparently what happens when you chop a double twist. If I rejoin it, this is what the Merbius loop with a double twist is. And I think we should try it in a minute because a lot of people who've played with the Merbius strips know this to be true, but it's now really obvious to me why you get two separate loops because the two halves, the blue and the red, are still separate. But if I twist again, it would be joined. And I think it makes the conjecture about the even and oddness of the twists become quite obvious. If it's an even number, blue stays with blue. If it's an odd number, blue goes with red. So if we go to the three twists, that's a three twist Mobius loop. If you chop it in half, you'll get this horrendous looking thing. But if you trace it with your eyes or your fingers, it is one loop. And it's really nice having a simulation because this is a pain to make on repeat by hand. There's one other demo we should try. So first things first, let's try and recreate the two twist one. Now we've seen that it should make two loops, uh, even if you've seen it before. Can we cut it again? This is a two twist Mobius loop and actually we should comment when I say twist, I mean a half twist. It's so annoying this notation gets confusing but uh, if you can imagine a plane like this, that's a half twist, a full twist would be you go back round. So that's why we have this like counting twists. Are you counting half twists or full twists? I'm counting half twists. This is a two half twist Mobius loop. It feels slightly tightly embroiled but according to the uh, experiment we did on the simulation, if I cut this one in half, we should get two bits but they're going to be mysteriously linked. So I guess this is the first thing to play with. If you've got some bits of paper and some scissors, try doing the mathematician conjecturing thing, like play with a number of twists and try and predict what's going to happen. There's one other thing we could play with, which we haven't generalized yet, but the final cut on this. Joined, like you said. Yeah, there are, there are two bands, but they weren't dropping to the table because they're linked. I, I can spin this one around and it's exactly as the simulation said because the blue and the blue have joined back together but in twisting them around they've kind of in linked themselves. Now I'm not telling people anything new about Mobius strips, I'm just enjoying the fact that I felt like I got a new revelation when I played with the simulation. So one other thing to try is instead of cutting halfway in the strip, what happens if you cut somewhere else? If you cut it let's say a third of the way in from one edge and work your way around, what will happen? Let's have a look at a simulation. So this time, instead of colouring it in two pieces, I'm just going to colour it in three pieces. And let's check some intuition. If I cut the three pieces, we'll get three bands. I hope no one's surprised. I'm not even going to bother doing it. But you can see that that's involving cutting sort of one third away from the edge. To get all three, you'd have to cut one third away from the other edge too, because it has two edges. Unlike a Merbius strip, which has one edge. And I can see it's got one edge because now the red and the blue have joined together again like it did before, but the green bit in the middle is still the green bit in the middle. And this I don't think is obvious if you're just trying it, but if I'm going to cut one third away from one edge, because it's only got one edge, I'm going to go all the way around and it will only be one cut because this, this third will end up looping back onto the blue edge. But can you predict what happens when I cut it? But if you're ready to watch, I'm going to separate the cut here and then we'll see if it actually backs us up. So this... Can you describe it, Brady? Oh, it looks like a suspension spring. There's a springiness about it. It's because of this twisty circliness, but the green loop is separate. Ah. It's just one green loop, agreed? Hang on, show me a few more angles. Yeah, okay, yeah, the green loop is separate. It's in the middle, so it looks like it might be linked, but the other loop is a blue and red loop, so it's gonna be twice as long as the green loop. So when we cut a Merbius strip with one twist, one half twist, one third from the edge, we should end up with two loops, one of which is twice as long as the other. The thing about making lots of Mobius strips is you start to go a bit insane about which ones are which and it's hard to count twists once you've made them. This is a one twist Mobius. I've made it thick so it's easy to cut one third in uh, and focus in. Just check I'm doing it right. It's about a third of the edge there, I'm making okay. a snip and then I'm going to go along that. So previously you were sort of following the middle of the yeah. highway. And even if I didn't follow the middle exactly, I ended up, I end make finish the cut back in the middle where I started. This time I'm going to try and track a third of the way from one edge. Now I'm expecting this to take twice as long as normal because it only has got one edge and you can see actually I'm about to come back round to where I started. 
it's really hard to get the scissors without. Oh, but now you're over the other but side. But I'm on the other road. side, but, uh, yeah. except it's not the other side because it's only got one side. But it does feel like the other side because of the way these things. So I'm going to keep going. Trust the geometry to sort of finish it off. I should come back eventually to where I started, back on this side, as it were. Um, you know, this is a hard one to do as a demo because it literally takes twice as long <laughs> and everyone's bored by the time you get to the final cut. But in theory, the final snip, we should get two loops linked, one twice as long as the other. What do you reckon? There's the, uh, the long loop with, with quite a lot of twists in it. I could count them. That would be another investigation, which I just haven't got my head around. And a smaller loop, that was the green one that we had on our colored version. It's always a relief when the simulation is backed up by reality. And I think there's a, the, the point I wanted to make is that Mobius, thing, Mobius strips are really fun to play with. Go and watch anything that Tadashi's done in the past. Uh, where he's joining two Mobius strips together. Cliff Stoll is talking about climb bottles, which are like the next upgrade from Mobius strips. I think he cuts them in half, doesn't he? I, I, I. Same deal. What's really nice is the Merbius strip you can do with, with a bit of paper, a bit of Pritt stick, a bit of scissors. A bit of scissors? A pair of scissors. And you can investigate. And even if you kind of know what should happen, that feeling of being a mathematician and like controlling some variables, the number of twists, where you cut, predicting the outcomes, like how many loops, how many twists, it's really fun. Pattern spotting, but also then can you make a visualization which helps you get some intuition. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about it is that that visualization for me felt so satisfying because I understood it, but now I understand it better. For us, and then the other strip, like so. By the way, a little bit of engineering advice is if you want to show this to friends and family, it's very tempting to make the strips, uh, loops, and then glue them at right angles, but then it becomes really difficult, actually. You have to go in there and glue it, and it's nasty. So it's much better to make a cross and then glue the ends. By cutting all the way around one so center line. So we now the see the two half pine bottles put together. One complete Klein bottle, 